going to begin our service with the king is coming and he will he is which is an exciting thought it's nice to hear the church bells <coughs>
next song is called Listen to Our Hearts. And sometimes we get caught up <coughs> in worship and in singing and in words, but God hears our hearts. Sometimes we don't have the words. So we ask him to listen to our hearts. Good morning. 
It's good to worship God together in spirit and in truth. And if you're worshiping online, then welcome. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and also uh, click on the notification bell for upcoming videos. The announcements, I don't have any other than one announcement of gratitude. When you leave today, if you haven't noticed already, my parking sign has been totally refurbished. And I'm assuming that uh, Paula did that. So thank you to Paula. And Vern, if you would pass on my appreciation, it looks great. Lord, we seek our light, your light this morning, your light that drives away the darkness, your light that drives away the fear, your light that shines in all good things. Bless us, Lord, this morning. Amen. Lee. Our call to worship this morning is based on Psalm 119. We praise you, Lord, and with the psalmist we ask you to teach us your ways and your truth. Help us to take your word into our hearts and into, onto our lips. Make us to delight in your testimony more than in riches. Help us to meditate on your precepts and to fix our eyes on your ways. Grant us to delight in your truth and to never forget your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me as we listen <laughs> to the Whippoorwill song. I believe it's the first time that it's been shared here. Planets with their rocks and rills, 
but give you freedom to choose your own will. I wrote the carol on a thousand hills. I write the music for the whippoorwills. Control the planets with their rocks and rills, but give you freedom to choose your own will. This week, our theme for the Sunday School and for the teaching is God lets us make mistakes. And what a blessing that is. <laughs> Did you know that God loves us even when we mess up? This week, the video shows us what mistakes God allows his people to make. So I'd like to invite the children to come on up to the screen with your hands nice and clean. If you had peanut butter this morning, make sure it's all off. And we're going to hear a precious story. In our story, we learn that God allowed his people, the Jews, to have the kind of king that they wanted, even though they, that God knew it would end up badly. And so I invite you, while you watch the video from home, think about why God might let us make mistakes and bad choices for his glory. Let's watch the video. As we heard previously in the Big God story, Samuel was a very special leader to God's people, and they loved him for the job that he did. But as Samuel grew older, something happened that broke Samuel's heart. The people came to him one day and said, Samuel, we want a king. We want a king just like all the other countries to tell us what to do and to lead us. Find us a king. Samuel thought about their request and realized, hey, that's what I do for the people. Why are they trying to replace me, God? He said. God spoke to Samuel and reminded him, don't worry, man. It's not you. It's me they're trying to replace. My people still haven't learned how to make me their king. So, let them have what they want. Give them what they're asking for. So Samuel set it to find out what the people wanted. So you want a king like all the other nations, is that right? Mm-hmm, said the people. You want a king who's tall. Yes. And uh, strong. Yes. And handsome. Yes, said the people. Well, the kings of other countries also will take your families to build up their armies. And they'll take your land and the food that you have and the treasure that you have to build up their own stuff. You know that too? That's the kind of king you want? Um, yes, said the people. That's the kind of king we want. The person God had in mind to be the king, based on what the people were asking for, was a man from the tribe of Benjamin named Saul. He was a tall man, a brave man, a popular man, and a soldier. But that's not what he looked like the first time Samuel met him. The first time Samuel met him, Saul was chasing after his father's lost donkeys. That's right. The future king of Israel was chasing after donkeys. But nevertheless, Samuel was obedient and made Saul the first king of Israel. The people got the king they wanted. God loves his people. And sometimes that means God lets us make mistakes. 
And as the people of Israel would soon learn, getting what you want isn't always the best thing. God lets us make mistakes. I wonder, did you make any mistakes this week? I was going to ask the people behind me, but I thought I better not because we only have an hour and, <laughs> and it might take longer. I made mistakes this week. I think I make a mistake every day. But the blessing is that God doesn't stop loving us when we make a mistake. And God, in the story about Samuel and Saul, God is letting the people make a, a tremendous mistake because Saul looks good now, but soon he'll show his true side, not a kind man. So when we make a mistake, we can ask forgiveness. That's the blessing, isn't it? That when we make a mistake, we're not condemned forever and ever and ever. Just like with mom and dad. Say you eat the, the last snickerdoodle cookie and you know you weren't supposed to, but you still do it because it's so good. Apologize. Now, mom or dad might say, well, I asked you not to do that. You're grounded for an hour in your bedroom, or you have to do all the dishes for the rest of the day. But that won't hurt. And you'll be forgiven. God forgives us. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, you love us so much that you don't force us to behave in a certain way. Though we know that your way is the best way. Help us to learn from our mistakes. Help us to be the, the children of God that you want us to be. Your ways are best, and help us to choose your path. Amen.
This morning, we are dedicating our Samaritan's Purse Christmas Child Boxes. This has been a tradition of St. Paul's and Knox for many years. And this year, due to COVID, there's been different ways that people could contribute. I know that some folks I've spoken with are filling a box online, which I think is a, a great way to do it. Others have gone the more traditional route, and it's gratifying to see so many boxes. And we need to keep in mind that there's never enough. There's never enough boxes. And I know there, there is some controversy whether these Samaritan's Purse boxes are a good idea or not. But like anything that humans can conceive of, there's always a good side and, and maybe a negative side. But I believe the good outweighs the negative. And I will continue to encourage Samaritan's Purse boxes until you tell me that you don't want to support it. And apparently you do. So I'd like to pray for the recipients of the boxes today and your offering that you have made. So thank you for your blessings. Let's pray. Oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless these gifts to your glory. Bless these children who receive them and remind us that there are literally hundreds of thousands of children who will not receive a gift like this. Inspire us to give more to serve you faithfully, to love as you have loved. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I'm sorry, I, um, I'm feeling had under the weather this morning. So um, if it's okay with Guy, <laughs> surprise, Guy, may I dump the rest of the service upon you? I can bring it up if you want to preach from there. Okay, you don't have a mic, my brother. You don't have a microphone here. Okay. Everything is written out. Sorry. Well, he can run back and forth. No, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Sorry if I'm not uh, dressed for the part. I was not expecting to uh, <laughs> replace our reverend this morning. Um, yeah, surprise, surprise. Uh, let's continue to give thanks to God. I think we forgot somewhere the Lord's Prayer. Why don't we bow down our heads and open our hearts and let's recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Have we done the pastoral prayer? And no. no. Let's continue to pray. Gracious God, we gather in your name this morning to praise you. We meet online and here to glorify you. You are the king of the universe, and we seek your face today. Please our, hear our prayers. This morning we confess that there have been times during the week when we forget to trust in you. We grow fearful when COVID numbers go up and up. Lord, give us the courage to live our lives fearlessly. We confess that there are times when we put our relationship with you last instead of first. Remind us that we need to have you as a part of our lives every single day. This morning, we thank you. We thank you for the new furnace that is keeping the hardy all warm. And what a blessing it is for us to be able to provide teaching space for 20 PSW students at this time. Thank you for Jane and Mike Megger, who minister the food bank, which is home in our building. Even during the COVID, our building, which you have provided us, which can be put to service. Thank you for our music and our praise. Without these faithful people, our worship would be dull, muted, lackluster. Lord, we praise this morning for the many households who are a part of our Sunday school. Bless them and keep the children and teachers healthy and safe as they endeavor to learn about you and the Monday through Friday schooling. Bless the little ones with their mask and sanitizer. Keep them safe. Father, we pray for the residents and staff of the Prescott Russell residents. How horrible it must be to live there and know that your neighbors have died due to COVID. Thank you for the staff and the Red Cross who are working together to care for the residents. Thank you for this place. Thank you for the privilege for worship you. Thank you for Robin and Ben as they have solved the issue of live streaming and so everyone all around the world can worship with us. Healing God, this morning I ask for reading for Tiffany as she recovers from her fall. Bless her and give her strength. Lord, we pray for Deborah, released from hospital but still prone to debilitating headaches, vertigo, and other side effects of her fall. Please assure her that you care for her and that you are with her. Loving physician, we pray for Kent, who is home from the hospital but still wobbly. Give him healings and thank you that he is surrounded by those who love him, Ruth, Sandra, and Justin. We lift, we lift up Claire as she needs our prayer. This morning we pray also for Travis as he awaits surgery. It's been pushed back and back. Please give him patience. Please bless this young man with healing. Today I pray for a young man seeking employment. Please direct him to where he needs to be. If he is called to serve you, please open doors to the call. Healing for Linda Waterhorn, recovering from a fall and consequently a broken rib. Prayers for difficult situation where grace and kindness are needed above all. Prayers for a friend who need new renewal. Lord, marriage is hard, but worth it. We pray today for all couples who are struggling. The compromise of marriage is hard enough without the strain and of finances and COVID. Please bless all who wants to strengthen their marriages. Remind all of us, loving God, that you are in control. I invite you to say a silent prayer for someone close and near to you that could use a prayer. Let us pray.
will now see, uh, the musician will now play It Is Well.
This morning, our lesson is taken from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7, uh, 15 to 27. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. I know him, ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people, for their cry has reached me. When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man I spoke to you about. He will govern my people. Saul approached Samuel in the gateway and asked, Would you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you are to eat with me. And in the morning I will send you on your way and will tell you all that is in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, do not worry about them. They have been found. And to whom is all the desire of Israel turned, if not to you and your whole family line? Saul answered, but I am not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel. And is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall and seated them at the head of, the, of those who were invited, about 30 in numbers. Samuel said to the cook, bring the piece of meat I give you, the one I told you to lay aside. So the cook took up the thighs with what was on it and said in front of Saul, Samuel said, here is what has been kept for you. Eat, because it was set aside for you for this occasion from the time I said I invited guests. And Saul dined with Samuel that day. After they came down from the high place to the town, Samuel talked with Saul on the roof of his house. They rose about daybreak. And Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Get ready, I will send you on your way. When Saul got ready, he and Samuel went outside together. And they were going down of the edge of the town. Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to go ahead on, uh, of us. And the servant did so. But you stay here for a while, so that I may give you a message from God. This is the word of the Lord. Speak to God. Of course, I didn't have to write a sermon, which is a little bonus. So let's hear James' words from the sermon for this morning. This morning, we see the very human tendency of settling for the good enough instead of achieving the best. The newly united kingdom of Judah and Israel turned their collective backs on their godly roots. Rather than following a God, anointed prophet, people crave to be like their neighbors and to be ruled by a king. Like their Assyrian neighbors, King Shalmaneser II and King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the people of Israel wanted a king, so God gave them Saul. Scripture tells us that Saul wasn't a God follower. God spoke to him through Samuel. God laid out his plan to comply with his people's desires. And he instructed Samuel very carefully on how all of this should happen. We need to remember that at this time, the Israelites had rejected God. However, God was still in control. God gave the people a king, a far from perfect, perfect king for an imperfect people. Guided by God, Samuel invited Saul to share a meal with him. It must have been a bit of a surprise for Saul. Imagine being asked by the prime minister to come and enjoy a meal. Saul was invited by Samuel, the preeminent prophet of Israel. While they ate, Samuel impressed Saul with his knowledge of his life. Suitably impressed with Samuel's prophesy, 
ability. Samuel drops the bombshell and tells Saul that he was to be Israel's new monarch. The newly named king is shocked. He is sincerely surprised by Samuel's revelation. He demurs by saying, why then do you speak like this to me? Saul is modest. He reminds Samuel that he comes from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin being the smallest and least influential tribe of the Hebrews. However, in God's plan, such worldly measurement doesn't matter. Saul was the man for the job. Samuel seated Saul at the head of the table in the place of honor. He directed that the special haunch of meat that had been set aside be served to the guest of honor. Was this special treatment a test on the part of Samuel? Was he wondering about how Saul would react to this special treatment? Had Samuel not entirely bought into God's plan? Another question to ask when we are in heaven. How would we act in a similar situation? If we were placed at the head of the table in the seat of honor, would we be humble or take delight in the acclamation? Scripture warns us that man's praise is fleeting and like the grass, it withers and dies. We are only human. At the end of the evening, Samuel anointed Saul as God's chosen king. Samuel implored him to submit to God, to give his heart to God, or will never be a perfect fit as king of Israel. This is where we see Saul and Israel settling for the good rather than seeking the best. Imagine Saul's rule if God had led him in his decisions. Imagine the society of Israel enriched with faith, but that did not happen. Israel was willing to overlook the speck in Saul's eyes because it matched the log in their own. According to the Bible, they saw a handsome man, a tall man, but not God's man. They turned their back on God. Remember the teaching video this morning. I love what God said to Samuel. Hey, man, they aren't rejecting you. They are leaving me. It's sad to imagine the Jews turning back their backs on God. They had been through so much together. God was with them every step of the way. Whether enslaved in Egypt or wandering in the wilderness or during the Babylonian diaspora, it's too bad that their memories are so short and they forgot so soon. Are we any different than the Jews? Only 100 years ago, this building was full twice a day. 100 years is a blink of an eye compared to eternity. To be a believer, Today is a personal choice with no worldly impact. Business people don't join a congregation to further their influence and build up potential clients. Serving as the Ladies' Altar Guild president doesn't carry as much weight as the post office as used to. To be a believer today is viewed as odd. Who in their right mind would believe in a bearded man in the sky who grants wishes. And that's not Santa Claus. An irreverent view of God in our relationship with him. And yet for many non-believers, that's how they imagine our relationship with God be like. Who on earth would sit on a wooden pew, sit masked while being unable to sing? Christians are weird who rant and rail against everything the world takes for granted. For example, Christmas is just around the corner. Soon we'll hear the grumbling Christian complaining about happy holidays 
rather than Merry Christmas. Soon our Facebook feeds will be filled with Jesus is the reason for the season or stable influence or let's put Christ back into Christmas. These platitudes are all well and good. However, we will not change the world's mind about God with clever slogans. Only when we witness through our actions will we make a difference in this world, in our world. God was making a difference in the life of Israel because he is all wise. He is quite content to allow Israel to pursue having a king. A human is supplanting him on the throne of Israel. But God takes the long view. He allows their desires to unfold. The people get what they wanted. Do we know what we want? Do we want all the same things? If I pass the sheet of paper around and ask your preferences about worship, would the answer be identical? Not a chance. Some would prefer all banjo music. Others would prefer the organ exclusively. Others to know why the minister doesn't wear a robe and a stole. Why not a suit and tie? The King James Version or the NLT or the Messer translation of the Bible. The paint on the walls and the carpet on the floors all could be up for debate. It is impossible to meet everyone's preferences here. Instead, let's focus on pleasing God. That's what the Israelites forgot. They became so focused on themselves that they neglected to include God in their lives. They led the trials and tribulation. They became so focused on the now and ignored their future. We do that. We get focused on today's headlines and we forget about what is coming. We are so busy looking in the rearview mirror, missing the past, that we neglect the present. It seems as if we are always discontent, seldom choosing to rest in God. God gave the Israelites what they wanted. He allowed them to settle for good. But getting what we want isn't always the best thing for us. Let us forget the good enough and focus on the great. Let's choose to follow God together as a family. Amen.
find my worth in you. I find my identity. Ooh, oh, you say I am love when I can feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say. May God keep us all in his grace. May God be with us today, tomorrow, and always. And until we meet again, God bless you all. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. And keep you.
Still on my tongue be his praise. 